The Flodden Horses, for Martha. No one had drunk himself foolish in the Newcastle Arms that year. Bad weather on Cheviot did not concern the men's shed crew, who had not spent the first Sunday of August threading the lampposts of the border town with bunting. On Thursday, trailers did not cram the taped-off meadows of the Lees. Only Shorty McCann, in plastered overalls, walking to his builder's van, stopped to film an otter in the Leet water, and Sally Moffat, returning from the night shift at Morrison's, weighted with carriers, paused to look, but could see nothing. By eleven o'clock, rain had arrived, and the undiverted traffic thundered on to Edinburgh. Afterwards, those who witnessed it would say, it began where the poplars had stood, until Foreman, the butcher, newly retired to Orchard Cottage, felled them to improve his view. First came the Destriers, prized by knights, easy to train for war. Then the Rouncers and the Coursers, flanks built for speed, and the agile palfreys men-at-arms prefer. Next the Jennets and the Ambling Horses, good for long distance. And bringing up the rear, one powers pony of gentle temperament, hardy and calm. And all were riderless, and none burnt or scarred, and every ear of every mare and gelding twitched intact in the shimmering air, and no flesh was pierced by an English bill. Score by shadowy score, they streamed across MacGregor's fields, forded the Tweed at a crossing point, which Jeff from Calico House later said had been popular for picnics in his grandfather's day, and were last seen entering an alder grove on the Cornhill side, on a track below Brankston Moor. Not yet spoils of battle, the Welsh pony keeping up with a flick of his fine grey tail.